today we've got a lot to go over. Let's go ahead and get kicked off. And uh, as everybody knows, as they've come in today, we are focused on how we can take the work that's already been done in SCADA. Um, today's example, we're going to use Ignition, um, UDTs and SCADA, and how we can immediately today leverage that work, that standard uh, data structure model and contextualization inside of the cloud. So as you know, um, Integrate Live has uh, been come together from uh, Alan and I's uh, mutual vision of just bringing people together around industrial automation. And today, Alan, uh, I'm super pleased to be able to introduce our guest, uh, Arlen Nipper and Travis Cox. Uh, I think everybody on knows Arlen and Travis, as well as Nathan Davenport from Sirius Link. Guys, how are you today? We're good. Doing well. Thank you. Doing, doing really well. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, we're glad to have you here. And uh, Arlen was just sharing some exciting news. He's been he's been functioning as his general contractor on a house build, and you are one of the few people in the country that got orders of windows and doors on time. Is that right, Arlen? That is correct. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> Merry Christmas early. <laughs> Yep. The only thing now is that brick are out one year, so we're going stone. Mm. One year for brick. Yeah. Wow. Goodness. If we have any brick manufacturers on the uh, set, <laughs> reach out to All right. Hey, let's talk, Alan, a little bit real quick for those that might be new to Integrate Live. Let's give a little bit of a background. Um, what you're finding yourself in today is our virtual workshop. The virtual workshop is where we identify a real business problem. We find solutions to that problem, do a live demo of how you can do it, talk about pricing, and then go into a Q&A. And then every time we do one of these episodes of the virtual workshop, we do a follow-up, and that's called the rundown. This is the conversation around the project that we would be doing today, uh, and that's next Wednesday, same time. It's the chance to get the story behind the individuals, how we got into automation, um, fun stories about the company, and then just kind of ramblings around what we're seeing in the industry and, and ideas. Alan, you, you're always uh, coming loaded in for the rundown. What are some of your favorite parts? With the rundown? Yeah. I, I honestly, um, one... I am amazed at the opportunity that, that I personally get to not just do virtual workshops and, and be able to show, you know, the opportunity that, that is out there and some of the technology and the, the goodness. But the rundown is probably my favorite part because of the conversation, right? It's the it's the it's the digging into not just the technology and not just the um, what we did, but you know, learning about each other, learning about people that you may not be able to 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 have a chance to sit down and just have a conversation with. And so, which is another reason we we are building the Integrate Live um, kind of forum website, right, of bringing people together to talk about the different topics and things that they share and, and uh, looking forward to really seeing that start to grow next year. And I think it's a, um, it is another arm of what we're trying to build right it's just a matter of hey like-minded people coming together with different rocks of life different interests but we can all you know learn from each other and be inspired by each other so yeah and get a look into the fun stuff we do outside of work that's the other side of it is the uh the projects alan's got a new truck and we're going to be watching you go through a full build out on that truck, right? Engine transmission. I am I'm literally buying a new ride tech suspension this week. Um, we're specking out the backspace and the rims and tires. And there we go. Yeah, we got a lot of work we're gonna do. New engine, new transmission. You can and I'm gonna put it all up on the website. You're gonna watch the whole thing kind of unfold. Cool. I recently picked up something new as well. Uh didn't uh, haven't talked about it too much, but uh, I actually bought uh, Santa's sleigh from him. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say bought it. Um, I, he, he gave it to me. It was on the house. <laughs> you know, my my wife asked me to, to uh, 
put ketchup on our shopping list and I got to the store and realized I couldn't read anything on the shopping list. <laughs> That'll happen every time. All right. Hey, listen, special announcement. I know Arlen and Travis are just dying to get their dad joke in. Um, <laughs> special announcement. Let's bring it back in real quick. Uh, next month, go ahead and if you would mark calendars, uh, January 11th and 18th. Uh, Integrate Live has been asked by the uh, Spark Plug Working Group to host a plug fest for Spark Plug. So on the, let's see, I've got dates exactly on the, we're going to switch the order around. So don't, don't get too weirded out by this, but we're going to actually do the conversation around it before we do the plug fest. Um, we've got some really big things. Arlen, I know we're, you know, TCK is what, tomorrow? Is that? Yep. Yeah. And so we're going to talk about the TCK during the rundown. We're going to talk about um, the working group. Actually, some some one, a video that I saw last night um, uh, from another channel was talking about man, it's it's like pay to play with with Sparkplug working group. We want to put that <laughs> that the, that to rest. That you can contribute to the spec. We need you to contribute to the spec, and you don't have to pay anything to do that. Uh, lots of conversations around spark plug that's going to be on the 11th and then on the 18th is going to be probably a two hour maybe two and a half hour live plug fest audience participation the whole nine yards it's going to be really cool think anywhere from a, around eight maybe even 10 different vendors all plugging into the same ecosystem in real time and then everybody who's part of it from the audience side having the same opportunity to pub or sub data out of that same ecosystem it's gonna be pretty special um, registration is not open for that just yet, but you will be able to register in the next couple of days on integratelive.com. Um, we'll make sure that we send out mail, uh, mail in to everybody as part of that. And um, one other thing, none of this would be possible. Uh, we couldn't put the time into it that we do if it wasn't for our sponsors. Um, so a sincere thank you, Software Toolbox, Canary, Flow, Opto22, uh, Phoenix Contact, and most recently, our friends over at Kepware. Welcome aboard to everybody at Kepware. We're excited to start having you um, inside of the community. And just a huge thank you to all of our sponsors. All right. I've used all my words up. <laughs> and someone oh, yeah. just joined the community. Hey, that I don't know. Be walked into a bar oh, geez. and asked, uh, is that stool taken? I just That's heard a ding. Every time my computer dings, it's because somebody else joined the Integrate Live community. So, um, yeah, no response to my my Dun Beetle joke. I done. I'm sorry. It was. It's yeah. good. It's intellectual. You got to think about it. It's See, I saw where you. I saw where you were going with it. As soon as the Dung Beetle walked into the bar. So, sorry. I'm spoiled by it. Hey, Arlen, Travis, walk us through the the business use case. Walk us through the problem, if you would, and sprinkle it in with some dad jokes while you while you do it. <laughs> What's the problem? Well, I'll I'll get started here. I mean, the Thanks, kind of the genesis for how this all came together is that you know it, it's interesting the journey that we've had working with inductive automation creating the modules for the platform for the ignition platform and you know 5 years ago we were very very happy to get a mod, one modbus plc to actually publish tags into an ignition gateway and actually see them arrive mm -hmm. and you know we as we started going through that we started doing things like oh store and forward you know it's interesting 5 years ago uh, everybody was had network went down. We had holes in our historian, but now not you know every single customer says, "Oh no, we can't have any holes in our in our history in our backfill." And then that progressed, and then we started doing things like injector modules, and we started getting larger projects with bigger companies wanting to get their data in the cloud. And so, engaged in several projects, we found out that. Every single project was a project in and of itself. Think 18 to 24 months of writing code to get tags from Ignition or from some other platform into data lakes. And then interesting, after the project, we go back and, okay, so great. What are you doing with the data? Well, it all kind of turned into a data swamp, right? Right. 
So what we realize is we've got to get to the point where it's almost serendipitous in that once we've got our operational systems ready to go, we should be able to very simply, without having all of the overhead of learning every single step of how to put it together, have that data arrive and just get the data and get it in context. So, you know, what is the time value of getting that data up into the cloud? Absolutely. Yeah, another another aspect to, to put on this is that we've been working with a lot of a lot of companies and and trying to get you know data to the cloud and and often those projects are driven by a different set of folks right than the people who are responsible for say the, the SCADA system or the operational systems that they're putting in place. Um, so there, you know, a lot of the, a lot of, if you will, the 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 analytics and some of the predictive things are are kind of happening from a higher level from more IT, and uh, they're they're struggling really hard with being able to get access to that data in a in a in a reliable, simple way to understand it and 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 have context on that data. And so what we see is a lot of times systems like SCADA becomes middleware uh, to be able to do that. A lot of mapping tools, many places, and people have to have that knowledge of where it's at and the code that they've written to make it all work. And it's it's basically this kind of fragile mess. And I think Arlen will show more about that as we go. But it's uh, we we got to clean that whole picture. We got to think about it really purely, you know, from an OT level first. And that's that's the one of the biz biggest problems we have is we're not focused from that level. Yeah. So let's talk about the pro proposed solution for today. Um, how do we take the structure, the context that you're likely building into SCADA and inherit that out of SCADA, right? Take that out of SCADA and get it over to other applications, other, whether they're in the cloud, really, I mean, today's example is in the cloud, right? But if they weren't in the cloud, how do we still do that with an industry standard spec? Um, tech stack that we're going to look at today, Travis, from the uh, IA side, what are we, what are we looking at? So looking at ignition and uh, you could at, you know at, on premise at the edge you could look using you could use ignition edge uh, which is the lighter weight edge of network solution to get data from uh, brownfield from those devices you know up uh, as well as a, a full ignition gateway um, that you or you can run an entire system and then also benefit of getting that data that you've already built into these high level systems and uh, what do we need uh, Arlen from your side uh, from the Cirrus Link side, um, the the tried and true MQTT transmission, um, that's a module that knows two things. It knows how to look into ignition, into the tag provider. It knows how to look and find the UDTs, how to find the tags, all the contextual information. So it's responsible for taking the infrastructure in your tags and ignition, and then being able to translate that to spark plug B, make a connection out to a broker securely, and then start publishing that information in real time. Now, the IoT bridge module for Azure and for AWS is kind of the reciprocal of that, is that on one side, it knows about Sparkplug and how to subscribe to a broker, but on the other side, it has all of the native APIs to build out the digital twins in the cloud providers. Hey, so I have, I have a, it's not a story, but I think I want to give some context to the, to the transmission module. Um, back in, back in the day, you guys had created the transmission module and we were looking at, this is prior to, uh, we were looking at some licensing issues and wanting to move all to MQTT and thinking about right, trying to write that transmission module and script and do it ourselves, not, not, not by, um, by a module. And I was at Folsom and I was talking to Travis and um, I may have been, I may actually been with you, Arlen. I can't remember where I was at, but one of you was talking with me and you explained to me the complexity that you had to go through to be able to get that module to do everything it does with being able to go down to the, the path level or go to the folder level. And, and it became very clear that the cost to be able to get that module compared to what it would take to to try to do that in code <clears throat> is just astronomical as far as the difference. And so um, 
we are a huge fan of the transmission module. It is exceptional in the opportunity of being able to really dive down into a very specific tag structure or a, a single tag even. So I know you guys wouldn't kind of say that, but and I just think it's it's really for what we looked into on trying to build it compared to what we could pay to just have it done in the transmission module is uh, pretty effective. Thanks, Alan. And and realize is that you know this is what we do. Uh, we 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 work on this, you know, eight hours a day, five days a week, at least eight hours, um, and and staying in step with. <laughs> the the release train that Travis and the inductive team have and making sure that every time that comes out that we're still compatible with that. So there's a lot of, you know, uh, cooperation and organization that goes with that as well. Well, today we're going to see not just how we would publish to one cloud provider, but actually we're going to go ahead and just publish to two, right? AWS SiteWise as well as Azure Digital Twin. And uh, Nathan's got our back just in case something would go wrong, right? Nathan's uh, Nathan's one of the Sirius Link uh, senior application engineers yep. and a pro at what he does. So you'll know, audience, if we if we do it right, you'll never see Nathan. How about that? <laughs> so, and, and I just want to mention here, one of the other yeah. notions that I've got is that, you know, back when I was running hardware companies and we were designing single board computers, you know, it, it never dawned on me that, you know, we never had a customer that said, oh, design me a single board computer and I only want to connect to AT&T or I only want to connect to Verizon or I only want to connect to T-Mobile. Nope, I want everything. And I think yeah. to me, what's exciting here is that we're not hard coding ourselves as a company to a single. In other words, we can pick best of both. And that's what all of our customers expect when you look at infrastructure. And it's going to get to the point where that's the th same thing they expect with cloud infrastructure. Yeah, exactly right. right. Travis, go ahead. I would say along, along with that, you're going to see, and I think this is the most crucial part of all of this, is we're, we're not going to write a single line of code here today um, in terms of what we're doing. We are using these off-the-shelf tools that, that really are fundamentally built to support these open standards and these uh, you know, get, getting getting data to where it needs to go so that customers can innovate with that data. We have to unleash it, right? Democratize it for for customers to really uh, take advantage. And especially in today's landscape, that's it's it's paramount. So um, it's it's going to be a, it's, it's going to be a fun demo today for sure. Well, and we're not going to have to write any code today, Travis, because we've got that IT cloud tooling piece there, right? <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> We watched, uh, you know, we watched, if you were at ICC, you got to see some of these slides when Arlen did a uh, presentation with Sage. And that's what, and it was that presentation that got us saying, hey, let's do this as part of an Integrate Live episode. Arlen, walk us through, if you would, how simple this really is, because from what I can see, problem's already solved. What are we doing here today? It is, it is. So we've all been there, right? We, we've been in presentations where, you know, we get to hear all of the cool stuff that you can do with cloud from the scalability to the cost factor to, you know, artificial intelligence capabilities, machine learning, asset management, tying it in with all of your other data streams. And it is powerful. We don't, we're not saying it's not, but it's, but it, the irony is when somebody in the back of the room, like myself or Travis or Alan, you kind of raise your hand and go, well, I love this, but how am I going to get my OT data into the cloud? And it, it, it's always interesting. It's, oh, it's simple. We'll just write a connector, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, they draw the line and now we go on. They, they say, hey, we're ready to go. Let's let's go. Let's get started. So but what's what's in behind that? What's, yeah, what's in that blue line? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, Arlen. <laughs> Let's take a look at what is in that blue line. Let's expand it and uh, walk us through when someone says, hey, we can get to that solution. Uh, what are they really doing? Well, all, all the cloud providers provide a very cool set of tools. They've got connectors. They've got secure um, 
edge of network containers where you can write Python code, you can write JavaScript, you can write Java, and you can start putting that together into a Lambda or a function. And from there, you can go to a data lake. And now you take it out of the data lake and you've got to reconstruct it to probably what you already knew at the edge side and then get that fed back into the solution. And literally, we've done projects where we've got a lot more components than this, but every icon that you see here requires care and feeding and taking care of it and knowing how it works and knowing how to deploy it and knowing how to upgrade it. And it is coding on operating systems, not using tools on platforms. So and we've got- Cloud providers don't ever- uh, Yeah, go ahead. They don't, they don't never retire services that they create, right? Oh, <laughs> I mean, well, it's if, all if you create it once, it's always going to be there, right? Right. It's not. Yeah. All of a sudden, they'll say, hey, you know, that particular feature, Alan, that you wanted to use in all of the tooling that you use, and you're going to call this service that we had, you know, not very many people are using that. So eh, we just no ended up it. Yeah. That happened. That actually happened to uh, we were doing a uh, we were trying to come up with an IoT solution a secure solution for IOT. And we actually brought, um, we brought in the, uh, the IBM or the Microsoft black belts. And we, we spent a year to really kind of drawing out an architecture and doing all that. And close to the end of it, we were told, Oh yeah, by the way, um, the part, the key piece of your architecture is going to go away next year. Yep. Well, and you know, case in point, um, Google Cloud Platform just announced end of life on their IoT hub. Yeah. Yep. And, well, and I, I want to point out real quick on, on this slide that all of this complexity that, <clears throat> that's typically put in here, I mean, we've, we've seen it. We've seen consultants spend, you know, at, uh, hundreds of thousands of, and, and lots of man hours to make these things possible. But again, all driven from a different perspective, from a different level you know, uh, understanding what that data should be and how it's modeled and all of that. They are rewriting what that looks like um, and fundamentally not necessarily working with OT, with the, the folks who have all that domain knowledge and the understanding of what's really out there. And in fact, they probably already have built a lot of that in place. And we're just kind of now creating a completely new lens on that data. And, and that to me is fundamentally a big problem, right? We, when, when we have a lot of these digital transformation initiatives, that, that an organization's not bringing all the right folks together in order to fully accomplish their goals, right? They, they have a different team trying to do this because they have, they have things that they want to meet. And that's perfectly fine. But, the, you know, when it comes to that OT data, we know that world is very complex. There's a lot of, 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 you know, stuff there that we really truly have to be thinking about it from that level and remove all this complexity at, higher, at, at the higher level so that, that people can actually focus on what to do with the data rather than how to transform that data. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. Well, it, it looks simple. It could be simple if we, if we kind of restructure the way that we've been doing this, right? And this, is, this next concept is one that I've been living in now for the last year of my professional life is and I think Arlen, one of the things that registered so strongly for me in your in your presentation was this concept of, hey, let's make it simple, but where's the problem? And the the problem lies in these these black holes, right? Um, switching switching it over to more of a hub approach. Walk us through a little bit what you've seen in your experience around these black holes. Well, I mean, this was kind of the genesis of of MQTT originally with Philips 66. It's just that now we've got the tool, you know, my joke there is that, you know, if Travis and the team would have been around in 1999, when Andy and I did MQTT, we wouldn't even be having this. Everybody would be using it, right? But the as I go to customers uh, recently here, the state of Indiana program where, you know, I'm not an integrator, but I play one on TV, is I went through all of these plants where people wanted to participate in the state of Indiana program. And we're walking through the factory or through the plant and you're looking at, you go, 
well, gee, you've got, you know, the, these carrier units, you've got, you know, chillers, you've got meters on all of your transformers, you've got, it uh, looks like that's a Modbus PLC over there. Oh, well, that's talking to this legacy SCADA system. Well, or this BACnet IP router. Well, who's looking at that? Uh, nobody. And it's almost like we've got these black holes already in place where our sensors and our valuable information are being sucked in, but then they, the, the data just falls in the floor. And so if we stood, took a step back and said, look, you've probably got 99% of the sensorization or the data at least to get started, let's put in a strategy to put in the analytic hub to be able to democratize that and then get it to where, as Travis said, we can get it to other people that want to use that data, not on, oh, let's start an 18-month project to reinvent the wheel. Right. Let's use the tools and the platforms that are available to get started today. Yeah. And so today we're going to look at filling that analytic hub spot with, uh, with Ignition. How can we take something that we already know and are likely using or have exposure to or have support to be able to use take all of these OT things, right? Walk us through it, Travis or Arlen. Yeah, sure. I mean, there, there's a lot of, of, you know, different devices and information that we connect to, um, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, PLCs that have their polling protocols and there's a wide range of protocols out there. And uh, that's where products, you know, like, like we have drivers, we also support OPC and where OPC can become really important is so that we can, you know, connect to the products that have those device drivers that so we can get access to all of that data, bring it in and, and then model it. But then there's, uh, you know, other devices, there's, you know, limbs equipment that could be serial, that could be spitting out files. We, there's all sorts of data on that side that we have to work with on the OT levels. And, but that data is all, of course, very, very important to use at higher levels. So how do we get once we're once we've got it inside of ignition, if we need to complete the the puzzle and make that bridge out of ignition uh, over to these other applications? What are well, we going to see today? I think that's where the tooling. I mean, really, that that is the power of the ignition platform. The, this notion that you've got everything you need from a tooling standpoint to be able and, and let's start at the tag level. I mean, just just beginning with a process variable, um, you know, one of my favorite things is enumerations. And so we're all <laughs> awash in enumerations where we have PLCs and RTUs and flow computers and uh, factory automation equipment. And it's publishing an integer value or no, we're polling for an integer value and it comes back zero, one, two, three. Well, the plant engineer knows what that means. Maybe it's a, a motor operated valve. And if limit switch open on open is this and limit switch close on open, then, oh, that means it's gone from closed to in transit and then to open. But on another motor operated valve, that might be completely different. And so what we've got to do is have a tool that says, this is a model of a motor operated valve and this is how it's going to work. And then I don't have to, call 15 people to say, what is that enumeration? It lets me give context to my measurements, engineering units, engineering high, engineering low. But now we take that, we move it up a level to a UDT. And a UDT lets us collect those measurements that we know we now have context on and build an even higher level object. So I'll let Travis expand on that. Okay. Yeah, and one thing to mention real quick in terms of, of that, that uh, that data, the enumerations in particular, is that the domain knowledge is clearly on the OT side for that, and you know those folks know what these things mean. And often, of course, the SCADA system they are changing that enumeration to an actual label on a screen. Um, what we're talking about though is fundamentally modeling the data so that nobody has to think about that anywhere else. That it's it's literally built from the ground up. To, to provide everything that, you know, uh, to really model that real world object, if you will, we're getting to that digital twin kind of idea. You know, those building those UDTs and then easily publishing that data up, um, we we basically create that single source of truth. We no, no other, no higher layers have to do any manipulations on that. It's already defined with all of its context. And I just think that's so incredibly important here. 
Yeah, I, that that is that that is the crux of this whole demonstration. This whole technology stack is that, you know, what we're going to show you today in in a thirty minute demo. Uh, there's no other platform that I'm aware of on Earth that you could start from scratch, build a model, and then have it show up in two different cloud providers by pushing a button. And we've collapsed that. 18 months of of a project into maybe a couple of hours yeah. and you're not exaggerating when you say 18 months like this no. that is i mean this is this is what these large consultancy firms and projects are taking to get value so well, let's... we've 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 started i mean it is it's an evolution right? right we started with all of these different components as people started to see how to leverage cloud and they started adding this capability to start coding all of this up and so we had to take those first few baby steps uh maybe painful to get to the point where well wait a minute you know that was there was no added value there in writing all that code just to get a process variable out of a PLC and get it up into the cloud. And then expanding that and all the code that you had to write, it's almost like Star Trek, right? Hmm. You knew what it was on the edge. Oh, this is a PLC on my booster station and here's all the things that it does. And then we dematerialize it, break it into its process variables, put it into a data lake. Well, now we just did the transporter part, but now we got to put it back together again. Right, yeah, well, and, and the, the last thing to mention real quick on that slide, that last slide is that hmm. we we are leveraged. We're talking about an open standard, you know, of of MQTT mm -hmm. and Sparkplug right. that uh, is is the transporting of this data. We we're not talking about you know this being you know straight only ignition to you know to cloud. Um, the, by ignition becomes really crucial to get all that data, model it correctly, and publish it from the brownfield world. But we do know that there's also new devices and sensors, and and that are supporting Sparkplug uh, and MTT natively. That fits into this picture just as easily as we can plug in ignition. So the, you're laying a foundation or an architecture that really allows for scalability, for standardization across an entire organization. And and uh, you know we're, we're and, and and they're not having to figure out how to map that data a million times, right? We're doing it fundamentally from from the edge. So I just want to make that point again because it's it's so important when we look at you know pe people who are, who have been trying to build these solutions. Uh, it just it, the approach was what they have what they want to do was correct, but the approach was just simply uh, from a different level. Well, yeah. you think also about the reality of data quality, right? And and the work that you have to do in machine learning and analytics to validate that your data is clean and, and actual ready for that, that algorithm to run, right? Now we're talking about taking that single source of truth that was built at the edge and passing it to all these dis different systems securely and seamlessly directly to that machine learning engine. Yeah, exactly. To Travis's point, when you see this MQTT server on this application or on this architecture, just know that lines going out from that MQTT server over to AWS or Azure could just as easily be going to other applications um, as well. So uh, Canary Historian, Flow Analytics, anything that consumes, publishes sub pub to MQTT Sparkplug, you're, it's that same equal opportunity, single source of truth. They yeah, get that well, data uh, with I all of its context. Yep. And I'll, I'll mention here real quick, e even I lose, you know, this is forest for the trees. When Wes was helping me set up this demo for ICC, I go, okay, Wes, we need uh, two MQTT servers. We'll, we'll build two, MQ in, two transmission uh, instances and we'll publish to both of those and then they'll go to IoT Bridge. And Wes goes, what are you talking about? We'll just, <laughs> we're going to publish once and they're both going to subscribe to it. So even I get lost in how you can expand this and how it scales. So you're right. For this demo, Jeff, we could plug in Canary. It could subscribe to that. And tomorrow we could plug in a fourth consumer, drop the second consumer. I mean, it's the serendipitous nature of data. And I can do this in a day to get started. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Cool. 
Well, hey, let's get started. Travis, give us the if you. I, I don't think we have heard a dad joke yet from our. Oh, I, okay, fair enough. But I do want to. I just state the obvious here. I want to cue him up before he does his dad joke. Make sure that to someone who's never there, there's some people on this that have just haven't had any experience with ignition. So I want to make sure that we're explaining to them what ignition is after your funny dad joke. <laughs> it doesn't have uh, to be funny. It doesn't uh, have to be funny. Just so we're clear. May not well, be. All right, Alan. So, you know, for me, for today, I'm using, uh, you know, my fingers. So, a good shout out to my fingers. You know, I can really count on all of them. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Well, that, was, that was good. Well done, Travis. Well done. All right. Walk us through. All right. So, Ignition, uh, for those who, who don't know, it, it's uh, basically, an, 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 we call it an enablement platform. So, it's an industrial application platform that, where you could build any kind of of solution. It could be, of course, HMI, it could be SCADA, it could be an MES solution, um, but really, really strong in the IIoT and uh, in the data ops realm because of supporting MQTT and, and Sparkplug with the transmission module and other modules that SiriusLink provides. So Ignition is a completely unlimited solution. Um, it's uh, you pay for server license, unlimited tag screens, clients, device connections, and more. So you could really connect, design, deploy without limits. Uh, provide the central hub for everything on the plant floor, allows you to provide that context, what we're talking about here today, get that data to where it needs to go. And of course, you know, also be able to, to build applications to give to people on any, no matter where they happen to be. They could, we can open these, the, the clients, the applications on desktops, just industrial displays, mobile devices, and a lot more. So it's uh, really um, just empowers customers to uh, take their kind of dreams, what they want to go and, and, and make it possible without having to, uh, kind of to, to lock them into anything. So that, that's what Ignition is in a nutshell. And, and we're going to show that power here today. Cool. But what, what we're actually going to be showing um, really comes down to what, what we're talking about with adding context is, is really building you know, these data models uh, within Ignition. We call them UDTs. So we call them user-defined types um, or another reference is a complex tag. But basically, you're able to leverage object-oriented design principles so folks who have done programming, you know, where you're building a class and you're then, um, you know, you know, creating instances of that, instantiations of that, um, where, you know, that object, where, or that, that principle we're using here within Ignition to really model these real world objects. So, for example, we can be moder uh, modeling a motor and the motor might have various parameters like an asset identifier, a serial number, a motor identifier. Uh, and then it will have members, you know, the values, tags that we care about, you know, amps, an HOA, uh, state, and a lot more. We want to be able to define that data, uh, that model, build it once, and then instantiate it, you know, for every object we have. And that is the model that we want to be able to publish up and use um, automatically, and especially in analytics pr products, because if you build an ML or analytics around a particular model, then at the edge, every, everywhere you have it, if you you build it there and publish it, then it's known. It's ready to go. Um, so it really provides that context, that adds information, and it really can bring different systems together, and we, and we can provide a standard model. So that's the cool thing about Ignition is that we can connect to different kinds of devices, different types of things, and it can be different at different locations, but what we're actually creating at the end of the day will be the same like model. Um, and with it, we have the ability to use inheritance. Um, so I'll, I'll show an example of that today where you could, for example, have a motor and then you might ha have various, uh, like you see here, various uh, members, but then you might have a VFD that will then have all those plus the speed uh, and you can inherit from that uh, as well as composition where you can have maybe larger UDTs that have smaller UDTs inside of them. So you kind of get this big tree. You really have a good understanding of everything that you're dealing with. So, so that's what the, the context of, of what we're going to show in Ignition and, and how that plays in, of course, to, uh, you know, to MQTT, Sparkplug, and going to the cloud. All right. You ready to show it? Absolutely. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get your sharing on your monitor. Stop on mine. All right. So we'll share through, my through build. Perfect. Um, share my screen, screen one, and share. Hopefully that's coming through now. Yep. Okay. So what we want to do here today is, uh, you know, show you from scratch how we can get all this up and running. Uh, literally, you know, install Ignition, connect to a PLC, get build those data models. 
and uh, plug in NQTT, get it published up, all of that uh, very easily. And then that's the part that I'm going to be taking you through is, is um, how, how we can build that, uh, those, those models in Ignition. And then uh, once we pu push that button to publish it, that's where then we'll, you know, Arlen will take over and show all the possibilities there of, of, of in terms of going to the cloud. But with, the, with Ignition, you can go to ductsautomation.com. You can download Ignition. Uh, you, there's, and it's cross, it's a completely cross-platform. So there's installers for Windows and Linux and, and Mac OS. Um, and uh, you can just simply go and download that. And I uh, typically do that in demos, but I also we also have a Docker uh, deployment for Ignition. And um, I, I like to show that one. It's a lot easier. So I could just do a simple Docker run here. I'm going to get Ignition, our latest version, and uh, basically up and running and from, from Docker on my machine uh, that I can connect up to and, and build all of this with. So you can install it natively uh, on a physical machine, a virtual machine. You can also use Docker. It uh, gives you a lot of deployment options for where you want to put it. And the reason I also want to show this is because a lot of our customers at the edge are leveraging uh, devices that run containers and, or, and orchestration platforms to put that service down to those devices so that um, ultimately it's really easy to get that out there. And where we can then focus on what we're going to show is building those, those data models here. So uh, I've got it up uh, and running. So what we're going to do is now go to uh, my browser and go to the URL for Ignition, which is localhost uh, colon 9088. That's the port that I ran it on. And then we're going to go through and install it, uh, get it configured. Now we can do Ignition Edge or Ignition. We'll talk about that at the, at the end, but the, they're really the same thing in terms of what we're doing here. The difference is really Edge is more of a lightweight, uh, a, a cheaper solution for, um, you know, for true Edge of network. We have lots of those distributed. If you wanted to have one ignition out there that connects to a lot of different devices and have a be unlimited, then you can use a standard edition. So they're really both the same in terms of what we're talking about here today. So I'm going to go through and get ignition up and running. And that's it. Um, now, uh, once this is done, it's going to bring me to our our web page where we would then go into the configuration and go into the designer as a developer, uh, connect up to our devices and, and make all of these uh, these models, these tags, uh, make that all happen. So um, all of this that we're, you're seeing here today, can you guys could do it. You know, you can go download and create a POC and, and play with it in our trial period. Ignition runs in a two hour trial period. So you can evaluate all of it before even buying a license and see, see it work for yourself. So I've got Ignition up and running and uh, you can see I'm in that trial mode now. So I'm going to go in the configuration area. This is a blank slate. There's nothing configured in here yet. Uh, we have no PLC connections. We've got none of that. So we're going to go down uh, first thing and go to our OPC UA and our devices. So for our OPC server, we have native drivers for different PLCs. I'm going to use a, a compact logic. That's a PLC that I have here, but it could be a Modbus device, Siemens device, an Omron device, all these different, you know, BACnet, um, 61850. Uh, device. There's all sorts of different drivers that uh, we provide. So I'm going to go ahead and create one. I'm going to call it Compact Logic, and the IP address is 10 24 55. Oops, um, for that. And so that's it. Uh, I should be able to get connected to that device, and uh, ultimately it will uh, browse that device, and and we can start building those data models in Ignition. So that's the step one is get connected to our different devices. Step two would be to then start building out those tags. And we go to our designer for all of that. So we get that designer, uh, download and run it. Um, and I already have that. So this is a designer launcher, which basically allows you to point to one or more ignition gateways that you may have. I'm going to go ahead and open up this one here and uh, to my local machine. And we'll start building out uh, those different tags. So let me create a new project here. I'm going to call it tags. And I'll go ahead and create it. I'm actually a bit surprised, Travis, because I wasn't expecting you to do this from complete scratch. I thought that was... live, Jeff. That's what we do. <laughs> well, I know, but I thought, well, you know, he would certainly have something already loaded and show the UDT. So now, <laughs> well, now we, if we do all of this we, in time, it's even more impressive. If 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 we do it. If we don't do it from scratch, right, you can't see what actually goes into building these things. And it's not a complex thing to do. We know the, the folks that are building the, these solutions on the OT know this data and they know what they want, how, how they want to model it and all that. It's just a matter of taking the time to actually structure that data appropriately here at the edge. So 
So that's why we're doing it this way is because it's, it's, it's not hard and it's an important step here. So what we're going to do though, is I'm going to go and browse our devices. And uh, in that, con that compact logic, I do have a lot of tags. Now in the compact logics, I do have some UDTs in there um, or some, some models in there. And, and we're going to use that. So for example, I've got a tank here and I've got a bunch of them. Um, and the, but this could very well be just a Modbus device with you know, you know holding registers and you want to point to different indexes and all that. It doesn't matter where the data comes from. What we're doing ignition is we're gonna we're gonna build that that uh, model with its context. So I'm gonna create a data type in ignition. That's uh, here it's called tank 100. I don't want it to be called 100. Just simply tank. The first thing we do is we give it parameters. Now I was saying before how uh, these models have parameters. So I'm gonna call have create one that's called asset ID. Maybe an asset serial number. Um, maybe you want to have a location. Where is that thing located? Uh, and these are all going to be strings here. And, um, you know, then I, I'm going to have a, which for me, which OPC server do I want to grab this data from? And last but not least, uh, you know, a, a prefix um, for where I want to point to the, the tags in the PLC. So I'm going to go to each of these and I'm going to simply, I'm going to bind the OPC server to that parameter. And, um, here, we're going to simply just use this, this prefix, and um, we're going to do that to all of them here real quick. So simply, I'm going to copy and paste this. So it takes a, a couple of seconds here to get through all of these. Travis, uh, and, while you're doing that, Gideon has a question for Arlen. All right, uh, perfect. Yeah, let me just get these going and go, go for that question. Arlen, Gideon wants to know, where would you store all of these dad jokes? <laughs> <laughs> in a data lake no <laughs> data swamp <laughs> no gideon says it would be in a database <laughs> Boy. oh love it well done uh, hey so i don't i mean i don't have a dad joke i have an observation is if you guys can see behind alan there uh -huh. on the wall yeah. uh i noticed that he's built a shelf a, a quite nice nice shelf for a coffee cup yeah so what's with that, Alan? Oh, well, that's a uh, Christmas present from my son. I mean, I, I asked him to buy it for me and he grudgingly did, but it <laughs> says uh, uh, world's best. Uh, actually, that says world's best boss, which um, this is the, I changed it out. This was the coffee cup that I saw <laughs> for Christmas. When I hired my son, he started working for me. Um, I then asked him to buy me the world's best boss cup, which is from the office that you, you know. So, yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you put that on display? <laughs> <laughs> Only makes sense, right? Oh, my goodness. Um, Elaine, uh -huh. I see your questions and we're going to take those at the end. Thank you for asking them. All right. So I, I, I now got where those parameters are in place. But this is where Arlen was saying earlier, where it's really important where we add the context. So this level um, PV value, this, this, this level value that we have, uh, it has uh, units that we care about. And maybe this is the percentage uh, between zero and 100 for the level. And maybe the, the, then you have the temperature uh, PV. And this could be, you know, the engineering units could be maybe it's degree uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius. And maybe as this is, I don't know, let's just say it's, it's uh, you know, zero to, I don't know, 200. Um, so we, we can put all of these different uh, engineering units and documentations and metadata along with these tags. Now, if there's enumerations, this is where it becomes important for us to, to model those enumerations. So I could, for example, create a, a, a new tag. I'm going to call this state. And uh, I'll make this, of course, a string. But what we do is use a simple expression language uh, in ignition to to take a tag, uh, in this case, let's say it's our um, our uh, HOA value. Uh, there's lots of different numerations. So I say zero, one, two, uh, zero is off, um, uh, one is on, let's say, and two is auto. Uh, otherwise, it maybe is an unknown state uh, that we don't have. So we simply can can translate. Uh, different information we have, we can and build the, the actual structure we want. If I want to call these things, have them, have them different names. If I don't want it to be level PV, I just want it to be level. And maybe we want this to be just simply temperature. Uh, we, can, we can model it. We can also put folders, all of that. that. All that context is built out. And now we have this definition. Then we would then, we would build instances of that. So I'm going to create a folder for tanks. And inside that, we're going to add 
a new instance of this tank. And when we do that, that's where we, all we gotta do is define uh, a name. So I'm gonna call this, let's call it tank 100 uh, for the sake of this. And I give it the, uh, the information. So the asset identifier, whatever that is, um, the serial number that I wanted, the location, let's say this is in Folsom here. Uh, the ROPC server is where we're getting that uh, data from. And of course the prefix, uh, which in my case is I'm gonna point to tank 100. And there we go, I press okay. I now have a, an, a model and you can see all the data is coming through uh, just fine. And in fact, I got that HOA, I have that state is now being unknown because the HOA is a, four, a value of four. So let's go back real quick and let's take, uh, let's add instead of, uh, let's add a, a three and a four. Let's say that we're something and let's say we're in a faulted state. Right, so we just wanna add a couple more enumerations, but basically now I have all of that built into this and we could have lots and lots of these uh, tanks that we build out. In fact, I'll, I'll go create one more, uh, tank 101, and uh, I'll simply put in some new values here. And this is gonna be in, uh, you know, uh, Houston, oh, Bakersfield, even better. <laughs> Uh, I should have thought of that already. I, with, you should have. I was, I, I I was mean, like how, surprised you were even hesitated. How dare me? Um, <laughs> so now I've got these two different uh, UDTs and you can see points of different, different sets in the PLC um, and you can see those parameters, what uh, that information is. So that is, is that's what we're talking about with building these things. Uh, and there's a lot of work that we can do in, in building standardized sets here. But the more work we do at at the edge, the more work we do here from our operational systems, again, the easier it's gonna be as we go up. The last thing I wanna point out with UDTs, and I'll just do this very quickly, is, um, is when, in, in a case where I told you inheritance, talking about inheritance, uh, I, like for example, I got a motor, let's create a motor here, and, um, and I, I won't add any parameters and all that, but I've got a motor, and it's going to have its its uh, data, and then we could easily create another data type that's called VFD motor, uh, and we can use the parent type of motor, and so all of that stuff gets inherited. And of course, what we can do is simply now add. Let's say we add our speed to it, right? Um, and so now what we've done is we have this uh, this base motor that is used here. So if I make a change to the base motor, I automatically inherit within the VFD motor. And we can also create UDTs where we do composition. So maybe there was like a, a bigger machine that we want to model. And inside that machine, uh, we actually do have a motor inside of that. Maybe we have um, a tank inside of that. And we can define, uh, we can put these um, inside. This is the composition here. So and that can be really, really important to model these more, these bigger, more complex, uh, you know, systems you have. But that you're then fundamentally, every, so that everything below, all the smaller elements are, are actual things that we could use as well. That data is important by themselves, along with the, the bigger object too. Uh, the way that could be all related, how it's all related together, and what, those, what that asset information really is. So I wanted to point that out. But now, I mean, this is where it becomes real fun, is where we can take this data and publish it up. Um, you know, and, and using MQTT. So I'm going to be showing using the, the transmission module. Arlen will definitely go uh, through a, a lot more detail here, but I'm going to go in the configuration. Ignition is a modular system. So uh, we have certain modules already installed from, from that. I don't have the transmission module installed. So we're talking about, I've already built out all this stuff. I built all my tags. I have this data that I want to be able to bring up. Here's how easy it is to make that happen. I just simply go in. I'm going to install the transmission module. Travis, will you show us where you could actually download that? I'm sorry, just for those. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of people that know Ignition that maybe haven't actually done this step yet. Good call. So on the downloads page, there is the uh, strategic partner modules, and there you can get the transmission module from SiriusLink. So here's all SiriusLink modules uh, right there, easily uh, available. Is this also where we'll, where we're going to get the IoT bridge from as well, if they want to? No, the IoT bridges are on both of the uh, associated marketplaces. So for Amazon, okay. IoT it. bridge is on the Amazon marketplace, and for Azure is on the Microsoft marketplace. Thank you. Yeah. 
So that module is now installed. And uh, I have, here's the transmission where I can start configuring it. And what we do is we point it to a, a broker that we can, uh, an MTTT server that we can go to. So I've also got one in the cloud. Um, I have this cloud server and uh, this thing is, is on top of it. I've got a cloud server with, with uh, an MTTT server already going. And uh, I have the MTTT engine module installed. So basically I wanna, if I'm gonna publish this data up to the cloud, I wanna see it automatically here. I wanna see it with all of its context. Um, and so right now there's no data coming into this, this particular server. So what we would do is simply uh, go in and I'm gonna, first I'm gonna configure our transmitter um, to uh, just point to our, uh, our tag provider, the entirety of it. And I, and I want to have UDTs being published as actual Sparkplug templates uh, that are gonna be up there so we can know what that is. Um, and I'm gonna call this IA uh, edge node one, here and uh, this is going to be my compact logics device, let's say. And so that's uh, the ask, kind of the, the hierarchy of where it's being published. So then I go here. I simply uh, I'll call this cloud data or cloud sorry cloud uh, broker, and it is going to be this IP address here. So I have something in front of that screen every time. Um, so that one, and I'll just put in the um the credentials to connect up to it of course you'd want to connect to a an a actual secure uh a tls connection uh where you'd be using ssl um for the sake of this i'm just showing a nice a simple connection here um but i'm going to go ahead and save the changes and ultimately we're going to see uh one of one now it is that's it it is published i mean that was as simple as it goes uh so if i go over to this tag dashboard let me refresh you're gonna see that there's now an edge node. And in the edge nodes, there's IA, edge node one, there's my compact logics, there are my tanks, there's my tank 100, and there is its data with its context automatically understood and known. And if I were to open the designer for this uh, cloud ignition, I would have seen that exact UDT model actually being there that I can then do whatever I want with. And that's it, from the edge, I just simply publish it. And uh, all this amazing, all these amazing things can happen out of that. So that's uh, really what I want to show on my side, uh, because then the, there's a lot of magic that happens, of course, when we take that to the cloud and uh, want to have Arlen show that side. Thanks, Travis. Um, we will let you guys get set up. I've got a poll for the audience. I'd love to get some input on. Um, so to our audience, if you would take a look at these two questions for us. Um, we are looking at how we can potentially do um, a regional show this year uh, in a great live show, like a one-day show. Year, you mean 2023, right? No, I mean, we've got 14 days left. Come on. You want to do a regional? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, a, a 2023 show um, that would have our sponsors and other potential vendors be part of it. And just want to get a sense of, you know, Alan and I want to do this, but is this something that you'd find value in? Is this something that would serve you well? Um, and really, it would be it would be what we have been modeling in these workshops, right? It would be a, a bigger problem case, and it would be the working out live, the whole solution. And uh, and so it, just, it would just be at a, a, a deeper dive, more technology, more more partners working together to, to bring that about. Yeah. And 2023. 2023. 2023. 2023. And a nice, sunny, warm regional destination. And then the second question. Um, thank you. 60% of you participated. Appreciate you. The other 40% wake up. And then uh, other question, please follow up. Um, for those that said yes, absolutely, or interested or unsure, um, tell me what would be a bet value add for you. So we, we are thinking heavily, of course, into a lot of demos, but what other features would you, um, would you find valuable if we could incorporate into a one day or a one and a half day event? Answers coming in, let it go for another 20 seconds. Did I buy the appropriate amount of time for you, Arlen? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. 
Oh man. You're in on. theory, you can see my screen. Yeah, I got you. What uh what a beautiful screen you got going on there too. Yeah. Took me a while to figure out what I was looking at. <laughs> hey, awesome. Colt's still up, Jeff. Yeah, I'm in it now. And thank you very much, everybody. All right, Arlen. Do the magic. Make All it happen. Right. So um what we're going to start with here is again, from the diagram that you started with, Jeff, is that we've kind of got these three areas where we've got to get the data contextualized. We've got to get it from our brownfield devices, from all of our equipment out in the field, and get it even at a local level, whether that's ignition edge or ignition gateway running at a particular facility, and then be able to get that into our enterprise connection platform. Now, Travis already showed a lot of that. I, I just want to start very, very quickly from the standpoint of if we look in our MQTT engine here, we have no models, right? All that stuff that Travis just showed you, that all lives out here at the edge. And we want to try to discover that as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So what I've got out really not in the context of this demo, but I want to go learn what's my infrastructure. I want to plug in and just learn it. So with that, all of these ignition, and these are real ignition instances out here in the field, they're already connected to an MQTT broker. So if I start MQTT engine, then it's going to connect to that broker, do a subscribe, and it should start learning what my infrastructure looks like. So you're and right now, basically... I've got zero devices and zero UDT instances. So you're showing basically everything on the left side of that line is what Travis has done. Right. Publish up to this chariot broker. And now you're you're over on the enterprise side, you're getting ready to, establish, you're establishing that IT, IT, OT tooling, and you've just started it by pressing the start button. And uh, three seconds later, I know about 365 devices, 25,000 tags, and most importantly, I've been given 1,900 UDT instances. So one second ago, I had zero UDTs. Now I've got AV meters, I've got centrifugal pumps, I've got chillers, coolers, dryers, uh, I've got LoRaWAN sensors, hmm. and I look here and say, oh, I got a group of smart buildings and I got campus one and campus one has a facility and that facility has a model, a facility model. And that's got a chiller to, to Travis's point. So I just learned all of that. And I got a single source of truth when what's coming from my smart buildings and we can drill in here and smart factory. I've got 10 of them that just showed up automatically. And if I look here, I've got my lines, I've got my conveyor, haul off, CNC, lathe, go down here, and it tells me I've got an extruder. And if I open that, well, now I've got the parameters for that extruder. And I already know that the asset ID is Wiley Coyote, Coyote. the asset serial number is BR549, and it's in located in the Oklahoma office. So I just learned all that in just a matter of connecting ignition. Now, again, it's not magic in that there is the work in configuring the edge and getting that information in or having devices that do spark plug V natively. So um, now that I've got this, let's take a subset of this. And can I inject a, a quick question that came yeah. in? Monica wants to know, um, she's she's wondering, did did she miss seeing the setup of the MQTT server itself of Chariot or was that, ex, was that existing? That was, was existing. Okay. Yeah. He, so, just, he, just, he just simply had it disabled uh, and that start engine basically enabled that, um, that the, the module to, to then connect and actually discover that data. Right, yeah. right. Um, so the, the uh, MQTT broker was already there it had been configured and was just sitting there statically waiting for people to either connect to it and subscribe or connect to it and publish or both. Now, yeah, I'll just interject one thing. If you yeah. want to know about how to set up a broker, um, that could be that could be Hive MQ, Software Toolbox, as Data Hub. There's a bunch of different options to do that. Um, and you can go back to not all of them, but probably half of our Integrate Live uh, workshops 
we walk through actually building a a uh, a broker from scratch and and then connecting to it. Thank you. So if we, Jeff, if we slice off a little bit of what we learn in that smart factory and we come down and we go smart factory one, you know, and look at all of our lines here. So one of the things that from an operational standpoint, you know, we're trying to contextualize all of this and Ignition does a great job with that. And what I show here is that since we've already got the models being published, then that lets me go into my, my factory energy and maybe pull in my service meter. And let's put that here at the top of our uh, vision uh, dashboard. And then let's go grab that extruder. And again, look at its parameters and be able to pull that over and say, okay, well, that extruder is, is part of that energy. And maybe we've got an Opto 22 EMU that is in on that three phase motor on that extruder. And that extruder is feeding into a parts bunker that's pulling those parts in. And when the bunker fills up, that's gonna go into a dryer. And that dryer says that it's a CO2 dryer is drying those parts. Maybe it has an Opto 22 EMU on it as well. But my point is, is that we just learned all of this contextual data and we can start applying it immediately. But if we go back to our topology, is no matter what you're doing, you've got all of that contextual information here, then you're kind of paralyzed is what's my next step? Uh, management, everybody says we've got to get to the cloud. We've got this digital twin technology. We've got Azure digital twin. We've got AWS IoT SiteWise. And if we look at those services, and I've already got IoT Bridge is installed on each of those uh, cloud providers. So if I go over to my Amazon dashboard, if I go to services on Amazon and pick IoT SiteWise, that's a service that lets me build a model. Now we've got some IoT bridge models already setting here, but I don't have any factory or any of my machine models sitting in here right now. I've just got my IoT bridge so I can see inside of it how many clients are connected, you know, how is my uh, broker connection actually made, things like that. And then if I look at my Microsoft console, I've got my Azure Digital Twin and Azure Data Explorer. So if I look at my digital twin, look at that same thing. I've got some models of those and I've got instances of my metrics, but again, no factory. So now how hard is it going to be to take all that contextual information, all that knowledge that Travis just showed you, how to build it into a UDT? How long is that going to take me to get that all modeled? Now, if I look, Microsoft has a ton of documentation that tells you all of the digital twin modeling language you need to know. Um, AWS SiteWise, it lets you go in and you can literally manually create a model. But that is man months of learning just to get your models in, let alone the assets and then how to utilize that data. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to start transmission and it's pointing at the Smart Factory Tag Provider, okay? And it's got... 13 models, and it's got all of the line, seven lines of automation with all of this equipment. We're pointing to that with MQTT transmission. We're going to connect securely to an MQTT server and publish Sparkplug B. We're going to publish the models, and then we're going to publish the instances of the models. And note, we're only doing that once. We're doing it to one MQTT server and IoT Bridge for Azure and IoT Bridge for SiteWise are both connected to that same MQTT server. So again, we'll just, you know, nothing up our sleeve. We have no machine models in SiteWise and we'll go over to Azure and under our models, we don't have any factory models here. 
We're going to start transmission right now. On, we just published something. Let's run over to Azure. Let's refresh our models. Boom. We have 13 models that we just built. So here's my extruder. And here is the digital twin. What you would have to learn in Azure to be able to, to model using the schema that they've got to model a, a to build a model. Now let's refresh our twins or our assets. We'll go over here, run a query. Boom. So think of it this way. This is an MQTT client. This is my client that connected from the smart factory. If I look here, the metadata for that is I'm edge node number one. And now if I look here, this is my, if I look, so my models are over here. The instances of the models or the digital twins were automatically built without me writing a, touching a single line of code. So let's go over here and let's find our, there's our haul off, there's our dryer. And here is our extruder. And we've got our die inlet pressure. And here's our engineering units. And oh, there's our parameters, Oklahoma Office, Wiley Coyote, BR549. I got all of that contextual information I built the model, I built the instance of the model, and I didn't have to write a single line of code. Now, at the same time, we didn't know anything. Now we're going to refresh our models. And over in SiteWise, look, the same thing happened. Here's my extruder. And remember those properties that Travis put into the UDTs? Well, those show up as attributes. Here's my location my asset ID, my asset serial number, and here's all my measurements. Now that I've got the models, I can create assets automatically. I go to my extruder, I look at my asset ID, Wiley Coyote, BR549, Oklahoma office, measurements. Here's all of my measurements and all of that's going into a time series database real time. So, Kind of the moral of the story here is that literally we could download Ignition like, tra like Travis showed you, go to Azure and or I, um, AWS Marketplace, get a free trial of IoT Bridge, get that installed, pick one machine that you've got in the factory or out on the pipeline, just pick one, get it modeled, get it into Ignition, Configure spark plug, or sorry, configure transmission to point to that server, connect to it, start it, and the, your twin and all of this real-time data going into a time series database will automatically show up in that cloud provider. One quick thing to mention uh, in terms of the, the, the demo in this, in this diagram is that, uh, you know, on the left of that diagram, all that, you know, what I showed in terms of getting the UDTs and publishing that through uh, transmission could, could be going directly to a, a cloud broker, uh, yep. which it goes into Azure and, and goes into SiteWise. But he also showed Ignition up here and, and, and showing that data. And, and Ignition is another great asset or tool in the cloud to be able to create dashboards and to look at that information as well. Um, but uh, I just want to point out from on-premise, it's one published to a, a broker in the cloud and all of these tools, including Ignition, Canary, other products could all discover that data so quickly and get the context. And it's just, just it's it's really cool to see that happen. Um, and, you know, it's because of Sparkplug. So just want to make that point there, Arlen. I also want to, I also want to make a point of the, there's there's users out there who have, you know, um, a culture of this is the PLC we use, this is the HMI we use, and I'm never going to be able to to like rip all that out, all that HMI out, and put in ignition. Here's the beauty of this: the beauty of this is you can lay ignition over a SCADA system, draw from those other SCADA systems into build your models, and then just send them directly to the cloud. And you can do all of that 
in the OT space. And then you can send it out of the OT space with all incoming ports locked down, all TLS encrypted, outbound only, meaning the Purdue model, and you can go directly to Azure or AWS and bam, just like that, you have all your models. So don't get stuck thinking, I'm not going to be able to do this because my HMI doesn't do MQTT or my HMI doesn't do this. Look at, and, and to Travis's point yesterday when we met, it doesn't have to be ignition. These are open source tools. If you can get the data type configured and structured and publish it, then it's going to work. Well said. Let's uh, pivot. Arlen, you okay with me uh, switching over? Yep. Okay. We got to talk about money, guys. What's the cost? How much is it going to take to do this? All right. Well, POC is free, right? Because of the uh, the trials. But what if we wanted to move into uh, production? Walk us through on the ignition side, Travis. Bear, we should say bare minimums of what you would need to purchase from ignition to get this done. Yeah, the, the lowest, uh, the bare minimum is the uh, Ignition Edge, uh, and that's the uh, edge of network, the, the lighter weight version of Ignition. Uh, with that, that includes all those drivers, OPC, and, and the transmission module uh, to publish that data. That's an $800 price point uh, one time, um, and it's unlimited tags, but it's for two PLC connections. And, and you could add additional connections if you want to uh, as for $100 each. Um, but basically, that is the the kind of if you only have like one machine one device it's super easy and neat to get in place uh if you've got you know 50 100 devices and you want to do that you could get standard ignition gateway uh which is fully unlimited everything's unlimited devices tags all of that and uh that's 2450 that includes the platform plus the transmission module do all that we showed here today these are both one-time costs that you could do uh you'd have on premise and you can deploy anywhere you want to deploy it and get that data and publish it up. It's it's really that simple and and uh, <clears throat> it scales quite well because if you have one device you want to start with and then you want to add a lot more, go ahead and do that. That's the idea behind it. Okay. Now, for clarity, there were some in some of the screen shares we would have seen a little bit more than just what you have in twenty four hundred and fifty dollars, right? Because I believe we saw some vision or perspective or some other pieces. Let's yeah, we're, we're we're specifically talking here on the actual, you know, of, of getting data from those devices, modeling it and publishing it through MQTT. Um, there are other modules that Ignition provides, all similar in that it's a one-time cost uh, for visualization, for reporting, for historian, for alarm notification, um, you know, all these different things that that could, you, they, they customers could, they could start with this and easily add those in later too. Uh, and even they, they may want to put that in the cloud, they can leverage the visualization in the cloud. So Yes, that's a great point uh, there, Jeff. Thank you. And um, um, but this is a great way to start right here. Thank you. And Arlen, what's the IoT bridge? Uh, the IoT bridge service on either AWS or Azure is nine hundred dollars a month as standard. Okay. Um, any long what's the restrictions to that, Arlen? Is there any Say it again? Is there any restrictions to that, or is there? No, any... that's that that's unlimited unlimited number of uh, publishing in. Unlimited number of tags. Um, turn it on, use it for a month, turn it off, or am I committing to a year? No, you can turn it off. You, you, you I think it even does granular charging, but okay. it's basically uh, would be a daily charge. So yeah, you could, uh, first of all, uh, Azure is 30 days free. AWS is uh, one week free. And then, like you said, you could spin it up, run it for a day, do your testing, spin it back down all charges would stop. Okay, awesome. Um, you all have set a record for the number of questions in one of these uh, <laughs> sessions. So we've got 10 minutes, 15 open questions. And to be fair, since there are so many, I'm going to just go in chronological order. Um, those that didn't, if we do not get to your question, you have to jump at the half hour. Um, Arlen and Travis, can you stay a little past with us and get through them all? And then they can always pick up the recording. Sure can. Sure. Okay. sure. Cool. Thank you. All right. Let's, um, let's come through. I'm going to start here, uh, at the top. Um, Elaine had a question on what well, was the ignition server. This was asked when you were on, uh, Travis doing your OT piece was the ignition server on the same network as the PLC. 
Typically, yes, that's uh, where it is. It's, it's usually on that layer three, uh, level three, uh, connected to those PLCs. And, um, you know, usually you want to secure that and kind of be on its own network because a lot of PLCs aren't, uh, they don't have security built into them. So you have that there. And then, but from there, it could be a, a TLS, an outbound connection, TLS connection to get that data up. You don't have to open up any ports in your local network. Cool. Thank you. Um, Elaine had a follow up uh, right after that question. Can you provide more details about network architecture for the solution at the end? Uh, what would be the easiest way for Elaine to reach out and be able to get more information about this? So there's some good information on the website in terms of architecture, especially around the IoT solution uh, and the documentation as well. But if you would like to uh, to, to discuss with with me, I mean, you could. Uh, easily email me at, at Travis at InductiveAutomation.com. We can go from there. Cool. And it said architectures. So let's just email Kevin at InductiveAutomation.com. Tell him that Jeff said hi. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, anybody's happy to help you, Elaine. Um, and that includes... We had a question about uh, whether this is going to work with the Opto 22 Epics. Um, yeah, if you buy, if you go on the Opto 22 website and you spec out your hardware and you choose Ignition Edge or and uh, or um, full blown Ignition, then yes, you get the transmission module with that, and it absolutely will do what we showed today. It'll publish the tags to a broker, and you you can go from there. and And it has Ignition on it, so you can do everything that Travis showed you that he did and get it into a model and then get it up to the uh, to the broker. And if and, you're in the state of Indiana, right. what should you do? Um, go, get your, go get your free kit if you're in the state of yeah. Indiana. Right. <laughs> I'm um, gonna say something, Travis. I was gonna say that uh, Opto in particular, Opto 22, their devices, they, they the, you know, being remote IO and energy monitoring and, and all that, they actually, support spark plug natively on their device too. Um, and soon we'll be supporting the templating or the UDT uh, module, model, mo modeling directly from that device. Um, and of course the ignition being on those devices too, allow you to kind of have a single device that can get new and brownfield all together, all publishing up into uh, that infrastructure. Great. Um, Craig has a question. Um, he'd like for uh, you to speak around best practices to modeling a very large enterprise that may not fully have ignition in the ecosystem. I think you started touching on this. The second piece of his statement, um, he feel, the model feels fragmented at the multiple edge instances versus a single model source that's easier to share with other systems. Uh, the whole model starts at the edge versus model from above. Yeah, so a couple things into that. Um, as as Alan said, you know, if you don't have if this ignition is not at every location, of course, you could easily put it into parallel with other systems uh, to create those models. I mean, the, there's no question here. The most important part that customers have to figure out is what what the models look like, how, what they want it to be. Uh, there's no standards out there that you could just simply follow, right? You're you're building your own. So it, you know, going auditing all your locations, seeing what you have. Uh, figure out when, as an organization what those should look like, what you want to be published up, and then then really using Ignition translate that makes it easy. And what we do is, if you have lots of Ignition servers out there, different locations, we can manage that from a central location, actually push down those data models, those UDT definitions to all the locations, and to easily keep them up to date as you go forward. Maybe perhaps start with um, with something small in mind, right? Instead of trying to model everything, model what you need to get that one or two KPIs that you need first to build some momentum. Well, yeah, and, yeah. and, I, and I'll I'll comment from here. I mean, we I do understand the question. I mean, they're saying, well, we should build the models up here at at you know at enterprise and push them down, but. I think real world, and Alan, you can jump in, real world is that synchronization never happens. Never so happens. what happens is that enterprise tends to go to this way, never syncs up with operations, and the project kind of falls apart. Yeah, I was moved into an architectural role with an oil and gas company, and my my kind of task was, hey, let's let's monetize this all this data that sits in OT. And Every single project that we started because of data quality and trying to get the data to where it was clean and, and usable, it 
the ROI fell on its face and we could never actually get past the data quality and the mapping to ensure that the data was, was correct. And so this solves that entire problem for me. Had this been available, you know, <laughs> it, my life would have been much, much different, much, much more successful, I think. So. Uh, Travis, uh, Persona wants to know, how's the current architecture different from Ignition Cloud Edition? Uh, that's planned for launch next year? There, There is no difference in terms of architecture. The cloud edition is basically, uh, you could spin it up in the cloud, in your cloud provider using their marketplace. So AWS and Azure, and you're you're not buying a license from us or downloading it. You're just spinning it up and you're you're paying Amazon or Azure for uh, the, the that particular service to be running in the cloud. So um, that's the big difference is it's kind of a pay-as-you-go model uh, for Ignition in the cloud. Uh, you know, but the architecture is exactly the same. And uh, I assume that it'll be the regular Ignition license, not a, an Ignition Edge license, or is it a different license? It's model? a different edition. It's the Ignition Cloud Edition. So we have our Edge, we have our standard edition, and then there will be a new one that we're creating with branding around that for cloud, only accessible through AWS and Azure. Okay, thank you. A uh, question came in just for Arlen. Does AWS IoT Core support Spark Plug B? Yes, it does. Um, whoever asked that probably knows that 18 months ago, it did not. And mm -hmm. Amazon, um, with help from a lot of our customers, uh, went and fixed that. So now it supports retained, it supports quality of service one, it supports last one testament, and it is good to go. Primary host? And primary host. But uh, we'll say a Azure doesn't have that, uh, Arlen, right? So That's correct. You'd have to get a different uh, commercial or open source broker that you can use in Azure. Right. Yep. But AWS IoT Core is good to go. Amazon did a great job in getting that uh, fixed up. Two part question: BR five four nine. Was there some uh, was there some hidden meaning behind that? If you've ever seen Hee Haw and Junior Samples use car salesman, he's always said, "Call BR five four nine." Ah, so Arun. Luckily, it's it's likely Arun had pointed out there was a rockabilly country band from the 90s called BR549, and he thought you were referencing that, but nope. I'm guessing that country rockabilly band was referencing the hee-haw. Yep. So there we go. All right. I love I love the questions that we get. That's great. <laughs> All right. Um Prahil would like to know: is it possible to show the back end of that perspective project? Um, how you were fetching that. I think that uh, would be a bit maybe offline. Uh, best for them to email or for them to email you. We well, we certainly yeah, we certainly could. But all it was doing was using the MQTT engine module to subscribe, and all those tags are automatically built out ignition. They were created, and then we just um, the tag dashboard project that I showed was simply just dynamically showing all the tags that existed there and their values. Uh, the the project that Arlen showed, the vision project. He had built those templates out and he just dragged and dropped those tags after it was discovered onto the screen uh, to show those templates. So that was really it um, for that. No, no, nothing really magic there. And but we could certainly show that in more detail later. And then the second question um, was around um, all of the tags that are part of a tag provider. You could have been sending all of them, correct? Oh, yeah, you could send it's the great thing about transmissions. You can send everything or just a small subset or multiple subsets. It's totally up to you what you want to have published up. Uh, two way communication on um, IoT Bridge. Can we bring data back into Ignition or is it just no, outbound? Not, not yet. We did that on purpose um, at this point on getting that, that, that data published up. We do want to be able to take learnings and be able to push those back down. But at this point in time, uh, we're taking it a step at a time. I don't want a AI um, coming down and closing a valve down in the plant. Okay. And, and I'm going to take question. a call for my wife real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah. And final question, Travis, this is good timing because it's going to you anyway. Yeah. Can you recommend a hardware to install the ignition gateway? Yeah, so uh, there's, there, you know, like as I said before, you can install Ignition on physical, virtual containers. Um, we have a lot of folks to leverage on Logic hardware. Um, they provide great hardware, especially uh, for uh, edge of network solutions. 
Um, they have uh, industrial raspberry Pi. It's really great. So we can also run an Opto 22 equipment um, on the Epic and the Rio if you want to have kind of a dual source acquisitive of equipment. Uh, but there's a lot of options that are out there for what you can run ignition on, and uh, you know, just find what you what you what you, have a what you want. Spec that you would recommend? The, yeah, the minimum spec um, is that we would like to have at least a dual core and one gig of memory, because that way you're not too constrained. You can have quite a bit of connections and tags in there. Um, but we can certainly run it on. Uh, you know, a, a single core with like, you know, f uh, 512 megs of, of memory, it's just not going to perform as well, of course. And if you have I would also more. say if, if you're going to try to run it on something that's like that, I uh, highly recommend calling the help, calling the ignition and then having them help you walk through the memory usage and a, a few things that will really make the, the project run, run more efficiently. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, last question just came in. Actually, this is a great talking point. I think it's, um, we, we can probably answer rather quickly. We might want to talk about it in more detail next week, but on the rundown, uh, Gregory um, said, hey, listen, um, seems like the basis for this digital twin modeling was really on having well-defined UDTs, but could we be building models as well based on a UNS? And so let's talk real quick about yeah. when you build this UDT and you have all of these attributes, how they are actually getting trained. Like, because to me, it's yeah. yes, 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 it's all the same thing, but I want you to. <laughs> yeah, and and Arnold will definitely like to talk about this. He's a very big proponent of the unified namespace concept. And, and but that's really what we're doing. So we're, we're, we're leveraging, we showed Ignition as, as a way of, of building UDTs to model the data. And what we did is simply translate that UDT to the Sparkplug specification, which really is, is building unified namespace. Um, that's what is, it's, it's designed to do um, to, so that we can know where that data is coming from. And, and, and that's, that's what's actually being you know, brought to the cloud. And so, um, if there are devices out there that already are their source of truth, they they just can publish it directly that you know to that space. Um, so it, I would argue that you know we're we're just taking brownfield and putting it into this unified in space. Um, but that's really what we've been talking about this whole time. That's what's so important right. about this solution. Yep, and I'm gonna show a uh, an architecture suggested architecture next week that has just been moving around in my head. Um, it's not, a, you know, it's just a suggest, uh, maybe it's not a suggestion. It's a, I'd like to have some evaluation and feedback on it. Um, that kind of talks about how to pair an analytics hub with a UNS, um, from more of a, Hey, what do I plug into where, uh, because it can get super confusing to start trying to think about this from an architecture standpoint. Yeah. All right. Should we wrap? Yep. I, thanks for everybody that held on. Listen, what you saw today was simply physically not possible <laughs> this time last year. Like this is this is the cutting bleeding edge of these new technologies. It will change your future. <laughs> it's uh, you, you may not completely understand the impact of it now, but the takeaway here is if we if we put the time in and properly contextualize our data back down on the OT side. We can enable all of these things on the IT side, and now we can do it very quickly without these long build-outs of tooling. Closing thoughts, Arlen or Travis? Alan? It's amazing. Yeah, I, I just say go try it. You know, pick a, pick a use case, uh, pick an example, pick something. And I think a lot of customers have been doing around energy, uh, kind of an easier one. You know, bring in the, what is the, you can find, find the energy consumption of a particular piece of equipment, or what's being brought in from you and, and bring that up and, and compare that and start doing some stuff with it. But pick a small use case, put it put it in there and, and see what it can do for your for you and and get your whole organization to kind of buy into your goals. Uh, so everybody's working together towards that. It's not fragmented. So that'd be my my main takeaway here. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the TCK. I wanted to mention real quick, Jeff, that stands for Technology Conformance Kit. And it's a set of tools you can download to test against your implementation of Sparkplug B. Again, the, the long-term vision here is that equipment will just plug in and publish its capabilities and we can automatically learn it. That, that's the holy grail here is that, you know, Ignition is great. It's, it's fantastic as our orchestration and kind of our bridge from Brownfield into new technology. 
but ultimately it's going to be the flow computer manufacturers and the PLC manufacturers and the equipment manufacturers that instead of them having to go to each customer and say, okay, this is what it does. You plug it in. And just like Travis and I showed, it pops up. It says, I'm a meat slicer and I do A, B, and C. And here's my location. Here's my serial number. And here's my uh, software vision number. Yep. Yeah, it's funny is when, you know, when people want to build applications in Ignition Ireland, um, they just wished their data would automatically be in there <laughs> to think about. It. They could just focus on what they want to do with it, right? right. That's what we're talking about here. I mean, with Ignition, if, if things are spark plug B, for us, it's like, oh, man, it's easy. Just, just kind of plug in Ignition, no problem. Let's do stuff with it. Let's build cool dashboards. Let's do some alarming. Let's do some reporting. Let's do all this fun stuff. And, and I, I can't wait for customers to start thinking about, about focusing in on what they're going to do, not only within systems like ours, but with cloud analytics and other you know, uh, AI platforms, things like that. Just let's, you know, let's, let's go to that. That's going to be fun. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll continue this conversation next week on The Rundown. Alan, thank you so much, buddy. Travis, Arlen, always a pleasure. Looking forward to continuing the conversation. Thanks. All right. Thanks. All right. Cheers, everybody. Uh, bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Hey, there's Nathan. <laughs> Nathan. <laughs> At the tail end. Nothing went wrong. Nice work, everybody. <laughs>